Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we have the Divine Child versus Muskegon. So this will be interesting. All right, so uh, Potato, any predictions? Predictions? Oh, well, I mean, oh, I mean, that's a that's a good question. It looks like we're starting with Flashpoint, so. I mean, this could go either way. Flashpoint is usually very momentum-based. However, I mean, it could swing either way. If I had to, like, make an early prediction... You know, I got my I got my money on the Divine Childs. Alright, alright. Uh, any uh, strengths that you think that the Divine Child has? Um, strengths? I mean, I know they're in practice. Which the other team should also be in practice, though. So, realistically, I think... I mean, realistically, it's probably even. But I think this will be a good game. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's looking like we're going to be starting off with Suravasa. I believe it's the Divine Child's pick for map first. A little... I mean, it's honestly pretty smart to start off with Flashpoint, though, in my opinion. Get the get the mood set for whether or not yeah. you're going to the push them or not. This first game is always going to be really important. The person who the the team that wins this first game is probably going to end up setting up the rest of the matches. So we will see how this will end up going. Yeah, plant the seed of doubt early. So yeah, everybody, get your popcorn. Um, drink water. I have water. Water is important. All right, we've got a ready check from one team. We have some planning going on, and then I'm pretty sure we're going to be starting. Both teams seem to be ready. We're hopefully near moments away from the start. I'm interested to see what kind of comps these teams are going to go with. Yep, we're yep. starting up, the match is getting ready, and now, just like that, we're in. Comps are always Suravasa is what we're starting with. Starting with Flashpoint. Well, they're assembling heroes, what are we gonna see? See, what they pick right here will definitely set the momentum tone here. Hopefully, we're seeing some really heavy hitters out the gate. Well, for Suravasa... I'm expecting, I don't know if they're going to play more brawly or if they're going to play more pokey. Realistically, on Flashpoint, you, you gotta probably want to be a little brawly. You also got to go places. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Lucio pick. Yep. We got the Lucio carry. We got Legend on the Junker Queen. I think that's actually really interesting here. We got the Junker Queen May combo from Pixel. Okay. I think this is going to be from... I think this is so, going to be from uh, Divine Divine side. I think it's going to be really interesting. Is that a Reaper I see? Okay, yep, they so have a very clear so plan. Area denial. They have speed. Okay, okay. Let's Realistically, I think their best... Uh, right now, their game plan, probably try to get a pick with that Maywall. And just try to burst down with the Reaper and the JQ. The only thing that's a little scary here is we don't really have burst healing. Yeah, a little bit slow. Got a Genji on the other side. 
I have a team fight, we got the ram. Well, going really fight. hard. Caught from the side, Lucio's down. May is in an isolated 1v1 with Sojourn. No, no, she got caught. She should fall. There. She gets out though, that's huge. Genji's oh, they're, flanking oh, they're behind him. They gotta get that Genji or it's gonna be a wrap here. Oh, looks like Fleep goes down, Freak goes down too. This Genji is kinda just wiping them clean for now. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some swaps right here. They have to. That, that opener was rough. Would not surprise me at all. The Ram is probably gonna eat through this JQ here. She can she can brawl with him, 100%. But this is a little. They're it's going back in with the same comp. I respect it. No, they can definitely make this work. They just need to play a little together. May's a little behind, but it's okay. She'll catch up. Well, they need their they need that May in order to put down that wall early because even though they're jumping around them, they need to lock off their their assistance over there. Yep, we got Lucio on the far right a little. This ram shield's up. It's gonna go down in about two seconds. Looks like we've got a straight up fight here. Oh. NG is still just kind of that going. Hit some shots. And now Sojourn is left good. completely uncontested on the side. All right, there we go. There's oh, the May wall. Getting a pick. Okay, there we go. The tank. All right. They need to pull off. Oh, oh wait, they're just going in hard. Just down one. No, this is good. This is good. They keep going here. Got a chase on the Kiri. Oh, Sojourn out. might go down. Kiri kills Lucio. Uh, Enemy oh, Kiri is one. down though. Zin falls to the Reaper headshot. Sojourn getting chased oh, down by Freak. One. Freak for two. TPing back up the point. And they got it. Oh. A desperate attempt. Lucio's a little Lucio. staggered. He shouldn't really be here. He needs to get out. Yeah, he's a lead. Good play on his part though. He gets out and gets out alive. Reaper has Blossom. I'm interested to see what they do with this Death Blossom here. Most definitely. That ultimate can change everything right here, right now. This Blossom could be the up. make or break for this point for them. The divine, the divine children, they need this, really and truly. Alright, Ram's going in, Ram's Ooh. dead, that's a huge pick! Out the gate. The Kitsune Rush coming out a little late, we have a blade in the back on both supports in May. Both supports are down. Genji oh. Blade going absolutely crazy, even though they lost their Triple tank right kill. at the beginning of the match, they still, Four that was completely oh one-sided. The May Blizzard coming out a little too late, as they get absolutely swept despite getting an early pick. Alright, now, so Potato, why would the Reaper hold his ult there when they were getting pushed so hard? I think he wanted to try to hold it to see if they could win, because they got a pick! Sadly, they don't touch the point. They should just get out of here, there's no reason to keep fighting for this flashpoint. Another pick on the Genji side, Kiri's gonna fall. I think Divine Childs just need to regroup and reset right here. They do have the point early though. Yeah, I think the Reaper thought that they were gonna win that team fight undisputably because of the tank pick. Sadly, it did not work out like that. A little staggered maze, stuck in the middle, it's okay though. They need to yeah, regroup here. The Reaper switching play. off without using his ult to switch to the Sim. Very interesting. Definitely an interesting pick. Okay. Mine Childs do have access to the Kitsune Rush here, though. And they have a huge line of sight here. They could just Kitsune on to point. I wonder if that's what they're gonna end up doing here. That's a big pick. Very huge hook into think, pick on the Ramatra. You think that Genji out there good? Legend's popping. He's going crazy on the Roadhog. Very big picks. They don't have to pop any ults for this fight. They should be able to undisputably take the point here. And now they just have to hold it. This is a little dicey though. I'm pretty sure. Right now we're looking at only one ult on the Divine Childs here. We have the beat coming out with the blade, going in, absolutely wiping the floor. They popped a lot of ults though, what was that? That was blade, overclock, that was two, was and two, beat. Two. That was three alts, pretty three big. Alts, three alts, yeah. I honestly think the Divine Childs are gonna be fine here. They still have their Kitsune. It looks like the Divine Child are playing really conservative and it's not really serving them. They could take the point, but then they just immediately fall over on the defense. They've gotta get a more defensive build set up here. Very accidentally sweeping backwards, it's okay, it happens. We've all been there. Alright. Symmetra walking up. Symmetra 74 to ult. Divine Child's really oh. gonna have to ride on this Kitsune rush if they really want to make something work. They're gonna have they, to go they soon, have to they have to make up yeah. their mind. Symmetra TP going down, go turn, going turns on the point. Sadly, oh! Nick. The Kitsune comes out! 
Hermatra Annihilation behind, they do not touch the point. That's gonna be a second point oh, for... Oh, they might take it here. That May is cracking. Okay, no, okay. Flashpoint's already done. Oh, All right. they did not take the point. However, if they did clean up there, they could have used that reset to get to the next point and secure it. That is possible. Getting, the getting early boots on would be good there for them. They're gonna have to make a reverse sweep here. They do have the alt advantage, I believe, though. They have the blizzard. They should be coming up on the Roadhog ult. Yep, there's the okay. Roadhog ult. You may well, it's okay, it came a bit late. They gotta get the pick here. Nope, no pick. This is gonna oh, be on fight. Got two ults popped on Divine Child. The Roadhog is gonna fall to the Sojourn, though. Oh. The Kiri playing super heavy. Kiri gets picked by Pixel. They're trading back and forth. Oh, that nope. gets chased down and eliminated. And it's you know, going to be another divisive fight. <laughs> Divine Child going to have to regroup. So now, what did Divine Child do there in order to get crumbled is the question. I think they were just apart, honestly. I think they need to stop holding on to these ults. Also, I think I heard a Kiri ult go off from, um, from the opposing team. That might have been a misclick. Get from Muskie going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Muskie game is holding the super well. Hoghook missed. Playing the corner, the Genji blade comes out. They gotta get rid of that Genji. Forcing They're out not the gonna have you good. Genji in the back, on the back line, gets out with one HP. May is stuck in there by herself. Besides the ult, wait, this ult could be a turning point in this team fight. Freak taking advantage of the ult, eliminating the Ramatra. Huge pick from Legend getting the carry. They're pushing up quick. Back on the Sojourn. Oops, property to stay this on him. a very big pick. Possibly. Oh, they switch. Oh, okay. too. They're focusing now, okay. Looks like the strategy's adjusting. The overclock coming out from enemy from, from Muskians. Oh, Sojourn. Is she gonna lose the 1v1 to the Sombra in the back though with the overclock? This could be absolutely massive. She dies. Lucio in the back. Overclock oh, is gone. Sombra is gonna fall here most likely. Never mind. Huge heals nope, getting attacked. It. Sombra is with her team now, but it looks like the rest yeah, of no, Divine no Child left. is falling. And it looks like that is gonna be game and point for Muskie. Unless someone can touch, but I don't think anyone can. That's gonna be the match. Nope. I mean, that was really, really, really one-sided. Very well played game from both teams. I think Divine Childs would have had it. I think we had to make a few swaps sooner. I think after that first fight, we had to make some swaps. Very huge Genji Blade here. The Genji, Genji was really, really tearing impressive. through them. Yeah, just too oppressive for them there. Yeah, that'll be game one going to Musk again. Just looking at that, the team setup. The oppression from the Genji alone was really hammering them down, and they could never recover fast enough. Because we did notice near the very end on that third point, they started focusing fire down on the enemy team of Muskegon, in their case. And every time they started doing it, they did, they did better, but they did it too late to get into the groove of targeting down that Genji. Yeah, I agree. I think that they had a few target priority things. I think the Hog was a really good pick. Because we were seeing value on second point from the hog. We were seeing picks. Ramatra was getting picked. We were seeing support picks. And it was going well. But I think that they just couldn't keep it all together and stay grouped, really. I think this next game, we're going to have to see some some adaptation from the Divine Childs if they're going to want to run this back. Yeah, they're going to need to be coordinated. They're going to need to be together. They, they're they going to need to make sure that they grab the enemy um, shooters they're early. They're going to be having DPS a push map. The Colosseo is getting picked. Oh, this will be a good one. But they've got to start focusing down the the, the enemy DPS there for Muskegon, or else they are not going to take that win. I think they had the right plan, they just couldn't quite execute it. I think that they have the idea in their head, and I think that they're on the right track. I think with just a little more tweaking, they can get it, though. Though, now, the next thing here, right? The Roadhog. <laughs> the Roadhog there was being really concerned. Do you think that was the play for how he was maneuvering? He was what? 
he was being very conservative um, near the end there we saw him bouncing back staying out of a lot of fire but he's the big tank shouldn't he be drawing aggro well to be fair i think with the sojourn it's really hard to be playing roadhog because you want you have to kind of measure that should i be out should i be playing cover because if you're out and Sojourn shooting you, she's farming Railgun, and then she can shoot at your supports. So there's a lot that you really have to worry about when you're playing Hog. So I think I think if they um, picked a corner, he would have been fine, though. But yeah, I think playing conservative server there wasn't a bad idea, but they definitely had to make that final push for that point. Mm -hmm. Alright, looks like we're getting ready checks from the teams. We will probably be jumping into game two here in a second. Game two is going to be starting up. We are on the Coliseum. We are on the push map. This is going to be really interesting because push, really, this is a super momentum-based game mode. So now I want to know if the momentum shift is going to happen here or if Muskegon is going to be able to carry their momentum from the last game into this game and make it just as decisive as the last one. I wonder if we're going to see any swaps from any of our teams here. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some changes from the Divine Childs. They have to have the change of the Divine Child. There's no way they don't. It is possible that they just run. They try to run the same comp here. Depends be, on whether or not Muskin is also running the same comp. If the definition of chaos, it would be a very rough one. Do not fight your true nature. We've got the Brig coming out. Okay. Very interesting. The Brig Hog. Alright, we've got another very brawly team here. Still going with the Brawl archetype. Looks like the only change we really had was a support change. So going with generally the same comp. This time we don't have the Junker Queen on opening. We have the Hog straight out the gate. Hog can definitely see some value on this map. Especially with the long lights of sight. Oh, we have a Zarya now. Also okay. very, very interesting. I think this is good. I think that they have a very good comp here. I think their idea is Zarya to protect the supports from the Genji. Brig to help with the Genji. Moira has enough self-peel to where they don't have to deal with it very much. However, the enemy team opts, Muskegon opts to go for a more pokey comp. Oh, that was a good working out for them. Nail. Brig is really far up right now. Same with May. May is a big pick on the Alari. Going so down, play. Muskegon's down a support now. First this fight too. is already in favor of the Divine Childs. Zarya pushing up very far, very well. Making sure to create space so that her team can also move oh, the center. Oh, there's symmetric traps all over. That's Second another pick. pick. Huge pick on the Widow. DPS and support down. Uh, the Ilari should be walking back out of spawn in a second too. here. Here no TP onto the point. Looks like Kiriko's gonna go down to a Moira Orb. Ilari is back taking pot shots, but this entire time we see the Divine Childs are pushing the push robot. Yeah, Arissa finally walks going. on to stop, finally getting contested. Sombra's got an off angle. Arissa is gonna go down though. That's the tank down for the Muskegon. This the is really push. bad for oh, them. Another pick? Several picks. Several picks. May coming out with the wall to wall off the line of sight. Very smart. It's looking like this is going to be a very decisive team fight and at least another 10 meters for the Divine Child. As the Orisa is down, jumping onto the, pay the push payload right now would be suicide. I, I I don't think so here. I think that they need to start pushing and doing a flank here. Or they're going to get hit hard. Here we see is this is this is really bad though for Muskegon. Muskegon has to put down some turrets. Uh, Elari super out of position. Oh, oh, Sombra off to go for the tank sub though. Myra does have the coalescence. Does she pop it to save her tank? She does. Very well pop coalescence. Turning the corner, maybe trying to get the Elari. Huge bubble coming from the Zarya. Oh, this is a lot of pressure. This is a massive pressure. To coalesce, and Orisa is going to go down with a well placed icicle from May. An absolutely Ripple, decisive yeah. team fight from the Divine Childs. We're seeing a now very different point. display okay, as opposed go. to the last game here. I think they, I think they applied the changes. They did it. They adapted. Another they question got the exact is, they need be able to push. To. Still with the Orisa coming out, going around the back. Zarya is pretty well charged here. 100 charge on the Zarya. Bat lamp down. That's a huge cooldown. Zarya is free to grab whenever she wants. The enemy team has to be very respectful of the Zarya grab because it could just be a team fight winner. The Arissa 
Zero Surge is gonna come out. It's gonna kill a support. One support's down. The May, the May Blizzard's coming out too. Reaper rates out of it. Oh, Marissa is not gonna be effective. In. The Lucio does risky. go down though. It's just Zarya and uh, it's Zarya. just Zarya and a support, and down. they all fall as Muskegon gets the point. They made it really far though. 90 meters is nothing to scoff at. That was a very good push from the Divine Childs. An excellent start. Muskegon's Out really gonna have too. to put in some work to make this comeback here. However, it looks like they're already starting to prepare. They're already starting to set traps, it looks like. Pixel with the hacked health pack, hacking the Orisa. She's a little out, though. She needs to be careful. Though. The rally is coming out from the break with the map. The map window, though, comes up right in the middle. Huge pick from Freak, but he gets picked by Ike on the McCree. Here as we see the break get pushed out by the Orisa Spear. I think Divine Childs needs to either- they need to either be in or they need to back out here. Looks like they're opting to back out. Very big disengage here. As they're gonna have to leave. Hopefully the Brick doesn't get picked as well. Nope, the Brick is picked. gonna get picked by Ike. Arissa pushing up with her team. But they they're not they're not pushing the bot. Oh, they're, they're not, not pushing, pushing the bot though. They're trying to do a, a team clean. Musk oh. again completely forgetting to push the objective. Getting a little bloodthirsty in here. coming out from the enemy Lucio. It looks like this is going to be a very wild fight. A lot of alts coming out from Muskegon here. As we see Freak try to maybe salvage something from this fight. As he gets stuck on the dash and can't climb up the wall. He will fall too. Listen, the bridge got picked as well. Pushing a little Brick bit too hard. Up they they need far. to reconsolidate. They They're just started too. pushing the push bot though. They could have... They could have probably been at about 40, 50 meters by now. Yep, they, they wasted a lot lost, of time. They've lost a lot of of mileage on that bot from not pushing it the entire time. Ike is really far up here. He's going to have to back up to regroup with the rest of his team, possibly picking the Moira, but it looks like she's going to be completely fine. Rabbit EMP come out from Pixel. Pixel with the big EMP into the grab. The grab with the pick on the Lucio. Huge. Pixel with the very big flank. And McCree's turning around to deal with her. Looks like Pixel might fall here. The McCree the does fall as well, McCree. though, with the Freak with the Junkrat pick, as we see the Reaper die from a very well-placed Junkrat nade mine combo. They're reclaiming that point. Arissa's gonna need to back out here. Arissa's getting pushed hard, they look like they're Looks staying like on top of her. Arissa is most likely gonna fall, she does have that BAP that's absolutely funneling into her, though. However, now we have Freak going around to get the BAP, if you can pick that BAP, that would be absolutely massive. And Arissa's Arissa down. and BAP are it's both bad. gonna go down. Delicious, absolutely delicious. This game is much more exciting than the last one, I'll tell you that much. 100%. Both teams very clearly adapting to one another. We've got a display of some MLG Lucio wall writing. Bubble coming out, Zarya has, a, has no bubbles now as they're holding the bridge. Pushbot goes under the bridge to get to the objective. Zarya needs to regroup with her team. Where are we using Fade to catch up? The Lucio is super out of position as the High Noon comes out and the High Noon picks the support! Moira and Brick are both down as the tire comes out. The tire is good for one, that's a Baptiste down from this team fight. Getting Bap down early is gonna be good here. And Zarya wins against the Orisa. This is gonna be looking- this is a very even fight! Oh, no, but the Zarya just fell. It just already changed right back. They're- they're even. It's DPS's versus DPS's it seems. Sombra's still up on the point. She's running around, she's trying to get away, but she will fall in the end. <laughs> still a very positive outcome for the Divine Childs, though. They're still in the lead, 3 minutes, 27 seconds left on the clock. All they gotta do is hold. Oh, the very big, big shield from the Zarya, saving the Brig's life. Terra Surge coming out, the Moira will fall despite the Coalescence. Brig is coming up on Rally though, if she can hold out for this Rally, this could be the difference between winning and losing this team fight as the Reaper oh. all comes out! The Death Blossom with the pick on the Zarya, forcing the Brig out of shield, and she will also die, as this looks like a very decisive team fight from Muskegon. They they're having to make up the difference here very soon, they're getting really close to it. They are, this push robot needs to get back on the point though. Still at 66 meters. Alright, now they're at 70. They're starting to make rounds, but this bridge is really hard as we see the Brig Rally come out. The Brig Rally pushing. come out. Arissa possibly about to get pooped. No, because of the tank passive and Fortify. The beat is going to come out. This is looking like they simply had more alts here, and it's looking like Zarya is also going to fall, and now Brig will fall with her.
And now they're being bypassed at this time, and they've and overtaken them. just like them. that, Muskegon takes the lead. Lost the lead. Let's take it back. I have a new plan this time. Will Divine Great. Child be able to take this back over? Divine Child does have access to the EMP right now. This EMP could be absolutely massive if she goes in for it. Very big EMP. The Lucio is stuck in the front without wall riding. He should die with crabs. Absolutely massive. Then he can shoot this lamp house. Oh. I will fall as Arissa is pushing up into their spawn. But it seems she's good. She's good to kill the Moira. They had to focus them down. They are splitting their attention to it. You can see here, they're doing the same thing they did last time. They're splitting away. Reaper TPing away. It seems now TPing behind the Sombra, as the Sombra will fall. There's Arya and Bap on the point. But Reaper is going for the Bap. Very smart target priority. Divine Childs will gain control back of the push robot for now. Let's see if they can keep it. They have a minute and 13 seconds to push this back. Let's see. It's moving real quick, so they should hopefully be able to turn this around. They just They're stay gonna have to get through at off. least one other team fight before they can start pushing again. There is no beat available in the other team, but they should have Bap Window now, as we see Divine Child's also coming up on Bap Window. The Junkrat Tire is gonna come out as Zarya pushes up a little too far and gets stuck in the room That's and she cool. gets picked for it. And the Moira Coalescence is gonna come out. However, the good news is they did the one of the DPS. This is looking really bad for Divine Child, as we see no picks coming out, but oh, the window is gonna come out and they will pick the tank. Lucio also possibly caught Lucio? out of position. If they get that Lucio there, there might be a change Lucio here. beat coming out with the that high noon as Moira possibly gets stuck, but she fades out. McCree high noon for zoning. Zarya is back now. It's going to be an even fight once again. You see as the Lucio gets picked, that's a support pick for Divine Childs. This fight could be over right now as Orisa gets hacked. Orisa is dead. There's gonna be at least one more team fight here to decide this game. This last team fight could decide everything. However, from that earlier play with the beat, I think that might actually really affect Musk again because now they don't have beat, but it doesn't matter because Ike gets a pick on Cleave. And now here we see as Freak is I trying to pick Ike. Third pick. The Reaper Blossom coming out, and it's gonna clean the point as game two is taken by Muskegon. That was a much closer game. Much, much closer. It, it looks like Muskegon's main strength for Donnelly lies in their ability to have really high priced flanks and picks from those flanks. And it yeah, just seems that really Divine seem Child just keeps getting crazy. hit for picking on them over and over and over again. However, Divine Child did turn it around really, really hard. They did a really well fought battle there and managed to utilize their tanks more effectively. I think they got a little overzealous, and that's what kind of got them because they had a really good opener, but the momentum fell off and they just, they just could not recover. I agree. I think that they were really close to having that match. I really don't know what they could have done. I think they just need to play more cohesively. They need to play more as a unit and together, just to kind of stop these picks from happening. Yes, because I actually noticed uh, when I mentioned earlier that Sombra, she turned and started engaging the um, one of the, I think it was their Sojourn? In the window. Uh, oh, in the window? The Bat, probably? Bat, yes, it was the Bat. That's what it was. Yes, yes. And the, the bat there was just picking them off. However, they were on their on the Arissa. The Arissa was a hair away from death, and that extra DPS could have been the what turned it around. He did get saved by the uh, the wind or the uh, the immortality though. <laughs> that is true. I think honestly, they might benefit from a divier comp. Maybe try and get picks for themselves. But it's up to them to figure it out. I believe in them. I think that they'll figure something out so that they can make this push. I believe in the reverse sweep. They are going to have to definitely move a bit more aggressive. I think counterflanks might be the play there for them. Because right now they have, to, they have to beat 
must get their own game if they're going to win this one. I it looks think like they really need to lock down them. Ike as well, because I think Ike is getting a lot of value on these off angles on the McCree, for example. The Cassidy is really just locking them down and shooting them and getting picks on support, kind of just laying into the tank, and it's really hard for them to deal with. It looks like we're going to be going to Havana for map 3. This is a payload map. This is going to be very interesting. Very curious to see what the Divine Childs are going to do here on Havana. I'm expecting something crazy and very boisterous out the gate. They might have to. They might have to do something really aggressive. They're gonna have to bring their A game with this one because this is gonna be game three coming up. It is. It is. We've got a commentator grabbing water. In the match, it's looking like we are starting. Traveling to Havana. We have the Havana coming in. Divine Child, we have a very different cop coming out. We have the Baptiste and the Ash with the Zen pit, looking a little bit more pick oriented with the soldier. I'm only guilty of the Ramatra in the front. I do like what they're thinking on the defense here. Guess it's a good thing I'm heartless. Ash will probably be looking to play this back height. Freak here. Freak is probably going to be the playmaker of this game. Shed the weight of your doubts, and your mind will become clear. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Here we see as the game is going to start. I'll get you out from Muskie. Our match does have that shield. We can kind of pop the mouth if you have to. Some very good positioning from Divine Child here. Ash getting a huge dynamite with a big kick on Ike on that loop though. How is then with the oh is then with the pot shots in the back? We really need to be careful keeping that widow. Actually, she's not supplying haircuts. She is supplying completely new head. She she is a surgeon back there with those shots. And here, as we see, the Ramatra barrier is going to be down for Then we be very careful in the corner. If Zen goes to pick Brick going in and getting on the base by Ramatra. Zen probably needing to back up here. Lucio pushed up for him. Both will go down to the Widowmaker, who is getting a lot of value. Ramatra is full up with Malga. Malga can go from out. Ramatra probably wants to get back up and not fight Malga. -y. Burning damage may be too much for him as Bird pushed up. Looks like he will be succumbing to the Brig and falling. It's looking like this first point 
There might be one more fight, but it's looking decently secured for now. The Lucio beat coming out from us again. It's gonna be big, however, the pick was already gotten on Divine Child. On the Genji. Going in, we have the Ramatra Annihilation coming out. However, this a pick coming from Ike on the Lucio. As we see, we have a running Widowmaker here. She's gonna try to run back to her team. Freak needs to probably back up. This Lucio is getting a lot of value in the back line. We have a Tracer coming out from Muskegon. A lot of change is happening. A Widow, we have Infrared coming out. Widow has walls. Question is, is will Widow take an aggressive posture here? It's looking like she's looking for it. She wants to get this pick on the Genji. She's looking for this pick, possibly on a support. I was going in. Page fight could be coming out here at any time. Ike is going to get another pick onto Pixel this time. As we see the invincibility come out, as well as the transcendent from the Zenyatta. Brigitte is going to respond with a rally of her own as she goes in, she's going for the Zen. The Zen is getting absolutely black. Sadly, they do not save Zenyatta as the Genji point comes out. Nobody will fall except for the Widow. As we see Genji then fall himself. Map in the back, Map in Ramatra. Ramatra is now Map piece alive. Map piece is getting swung on. Brigitte has hands. Well, I guess she has a mace, but you get the point. As we see Ramatra also fall, and this point will be taken by Muskegon. Looks like the game is already spiced up. Yep, we have three minutes left on this game. I going in on Pixel. However, he has friends as Tracer eats a direct from that rocket immediately has to recall. It looks like Musky in here is cornered, getting pincered from two sides. Oh, looks like there's a deep dive on the side, the side here. Soldier does have sights. Sights could make or break this team fight. Oh, they've Soldier's traded. As Malcolm comes not... in from the oh. side, and Soldier Pixel's gonna will drop. fall to fight the Matrix from the Diva as we see the beat come out from Musk again. Payload is being pushed this entire time, though. Divine Child's fighting in a very bad spot currently, not stopping the payload at all, as we will also probably see the map just fall here. It looks like Muskegon turned that counter a flank against them, and now they are using it to their advantage. But it looks like at this point in time, the oh, and they have another Divine loss Child's of the Baptiste. Baptiste was very out of position. Plebis needed to go back to his team there. However, it looks like they're trying to secure that payload. Sombra's trying once again to hack that DPS, and they managed to get the pick on Ike. They got two picks. Sombra's popping off. Diva in the back, Legend trying to make something happen here for his team. However, it's looking like it's going to be very rough as we see the Sombra attempt to contest. Diva coming in, getting the remake. That's absolutely massive. Brig being contested. Oh. Brig being taken down by the Sombra. Down. That's an absolutely massive pick as we see the visor come out from the high ground. These amazing teleports from Sombra here. Sombra getting the health pack in the back. She's getting out there. The Sojourn swap, Ike is now on the Sojourn, switching ears, that's it, that's it, I can read, I swear. Um, <laughs> Sojourn swap. Oh. As we see, he's to the D.Va. And just like that, it's looking like very well made shot, very well made shot from Judas. Because we see that this point will then be stuck here. We have at least two more team fights coming out from Muskie in here to try to get this payload farther. However, if Divine Childs can hold this here, this is a very good holding spot that they can have this payload at. Looks like Muskegon's coming in with some more pick plays. They're gonna attempt to poke them down before pushing in, it looks like. Never mind, they're coming straight in and hard too. Going in, we have a rushing in on the back oh, line. Can't just left the front. Out here. Oh, the Power Diva bomb two, gets two, two though three. with the remake, killing another one. Ike down from the remake. The overclock coming up, but it comes out too late as Diva is good for four. Legend Whoa. absolutely massive that fight as we see Transcendence on 96 and Freak Tricks Zell in the back line. They are definitely holding it here. 24 seconds on the clock, it's gonna be a tough sell. It looks like, it looks like there's three alts on... This is gonna be very difficult for Muskegon to take. Three alts, don't be conservative with their alts. This is the last fight. Big pick on the Genjis, and Yada showing his disciple who the and why he's the master. Ike going down, he's playing too aggressive. 
as we see the picks come out in the EMP, and this is going to be an extremely decisive fight for Divine Childs as they hold Overwhelming the victory there. Very Perfect play. Played. I think Ike needs to stop playing so aggressive. It was working it earlier, but he was just kind of getting picked now. It looks like Ike has played a new character every single round. Um, and frankly, it's it's starting to really show that he's, he's starting to bend, uh, bend down a little bit there. Instead of having the same energy he brought with that Genji, that he's no longer true. pushing that in. And that's really hit him. Some him. position swaps coming out from the team here. They're going to have to. If Ike isn't on that, on that offense, he's falling apart. Now we have Divine Childs on the offense. Freak on the Genji. It's looking like they're going to opt for dive, just like we said earlier. They're going to be trying to outpick them, which is a very, very smart idea here, especially since they know that they will probably be playing that Widow. Zin will probably be on that Widow. It would not surprise me with the long line of sight that Havana has on this first payload. <laughs> this could be explosive, depending on if they can get a pick out of spawn here. Do not fight your true also, this could go the other way, though. If the Widow is present and the Widow does land a very good headshot, this could go very bad. It looks like we have a Sigma coming out from the other team. The other oh, they're showing their hand early. Interesting. Four, three, two. <laughs> However, he also, the Sig did also see. So Muskegon probably knows what the plan is as we see a Torb turret up very close. She sees some poking coming out from the carry. Cleave just poking down the main slide line. Was that a Widow shot that I saw in the back there? It might have been. Nope, that is an Awari turret. As we had seen the May, the counter dive coming out. So we have the Torb and the May. Muskin drawing first blood's very decisive here. We'll see how they handle it. Oh, Devon Child's opting to. The we can follow very smart, actually. I think the Arisa Procure is actually pretty good. As we see the Mercy pick also come out, we have the Far Mercy coming out. They're going to be showing them, they're going to be prescribing them some medicine. Pick some hit scans so you can take us down as the Far Mercy is going up into the air. Far needs to try to get some value here as we see Legend I think he's pick Flush. Flush is down. That's down one. May is beaming. Cleave Mercy's in the getting back too far. Cleave needs to and look down. at his back as he gets taken down. Farah killing the other support. Ike is the only one left, however. As we see Legend pick kill. And just like that, Ike will... Oh, Ike? Can Ike save this point? Ike is going to save it. Can Ike save this point? It's looking like possibly... Aris is pushing up by herself. No support. It's looking Can like Ike it? will save Ike the point. Save the point. Extremely well played from the Ilari of Muskegon. There you see as the Farah and the Mercy are stuck in the side room. We're gonna need to get some pushing done. You should not be pushing out there. Be very careful with the Torb turret. The Alari turret can also go down here. Oh, here it's down, it's been. As we get the disruption of the sunrise the coming ultimate. out. However, we have the barrage coming out. That's a support Shot down. Like Icarus, the Mercy Rise down. coming out from behind the car as Ike tries to stop it. However, Mercy will fall. The res will go through. But I don't think it will mean much as Freak is getting beamed, but he gets out as he finds cover in the back. May die because Zin thought that back he could up. get out. Two Ilari picks. also going down. Ike getting killed, finally. And now we see the Ramatra also falling as Team Torbjorn White finally right there. Back. Very well played team fight. That res was make or break in that team fight. Very big res from Cleavus. Huge res, huge res, yes, most definitely. Now let's see how they do with this to to open Lord. They're gonna get the cap. They only have to make it past the second point as we see the blizzard come out the window. Rissa fortifying to get the May away from her team. Very smart. This guy keeps pushing them back. Well. That May. That First May pick, there we go. Huge pick from the Arisa Prime Fire. We're gonna see her go down. As we see a Moira pick come out now. But that Arisa's too far However, ahead and goes now. Legend will fall with a very well placed shot from the supports. Bleepus with the res on the Arisa, very smart. Freak will fall, Terra Surge coming out. The lamp, lamp is dead, Terra Surge not getting anyone. However, he's forcing him off as he gets distant on the payload. Mercy getting pushed by a Torbjorn right now. Arisa will fall once oh. again. 
as we see what is most likely going to be a reset from the Divine Child. So, adding the ult here, I actually think that was a very bad use of Molten Core. The fight was over. Mercy can't get picked here, that would be very unfortunate. Their wrist is flying a little too close to the sun consistently, they gotta slow that down. A little, however, the Alari turret is down. That is a very big main source of healing. As Farah oh. tries to go up, but Farah gets lasered. The captive sun is gonna come out from the Alari as she throws it at the Mercy. Will Mercy go down as she chases and Mercy is killed? They're playing too far away from each other. Devon Child's following right back into that first game. Angst however, they Legend had. seems to be Legend seems to be attempting to save this. <laughs> He's attempting. Let's see how As he does. See freak TP in on the Reaper into the May. He's gonna go for it. As he goes down, and May is one HP. They have way too much support on them. They they keep um, fighting separately. It's really hindering them there. I think they got this match if they just regroup and go in together. Here we see, it's probably gonna be a team fight coming out here. I wanna see what ults are gonna come out as the Reaper team is oh, up in the EMP. That EMP is absolutely massive as Freak does fall. However, the Terror Surge coming out from the Orisa let go a little early. The May Ice Block is out as we see the Annihilation come out from the Ramatra. Beautiful wall. And it's looking like Divine Childs are going to be getting diffed again here, sadly. Kill with the absolutely massive Annihilation. I think that was just ult diff, honestly. Freak with the swap. To I the, think that what got them there was that teleport behind the lines a little too early. Should have waited for a, a better pick. They should have had more sustained DPS at the beginning. I think the casting swap is really big. I think Freak needs to play with his team a little more. 